So it helps to boost glutathione, it helps to decrease inflammation, um, and what it has to do, the first product opens up the cell and gets the toxins into the, into the digestive tract, and the other part gets it into the digestive tract and helps you get it out. So you have to get it out safely. You do not want to sweat out all of your toxins. It would be very dangerous to sweat out all of your toxicity. You don't want that stuff coming through your skin. It's got to go through your bowels, which is the way God designed you to detoxify. The beautiful thing about your body is it's very, very good at detoxifying. It's actually brilliant at detoxifying. We just keep retoxing. So the key is not just to detox, but it's to stop retoxing. And then we talked about the protein. D3. This is one thing everybody should know. Everybody's heard about D3, right? Why are we told we need vitamin D? From the, that's how we get it. We're supposed to get it from the sun, ideally. But what's, it, what's its benefit? That's your immune system. Immune system? Bones. bones. We're usually told it's for our bones. It, now everybody knows it is for mood. It's for your immune system. Um, low vitamin D levels have been associated with arthritis with colon and breast cancers, with um, allergies and asthma, with immune autoimmune disorders, uh, chronic pain syndrome, depression, diabetes, type 2 diabetes. So low vitamin D has been associated with just about everything we need to worry about. And there's and a difference between the regular D and the D3? D3 is the one you'd get at a health food store or that we carry here. D2 is the one that you'd get from your, from your pharmacy. The, big, the green pill, anyone ever had the green pill? It's 50,000 units once per week. You'd be much better taking 5,000 every single day of D3. D2 is synthetic. D3 is from a plant. It's cholecalciferol. The other one is ergocalciferol. And your body absorbs D3 much better than D D2. Um, so research showed, and really everybody should be disgusted if this is not mainstream news, but within a few days, half of the cancer cells in, in Dr. Or Dr. Welsh's study shriveled up and died, and the vitamin was the same had the same effect as the tamoxifen that they were using for the breast cancer. So just safe, good old-fashioned vitamin D. Um, but you guys have been told you need to worry about your vitamin D. If you're if you're in the sun too long, which is how we're supposed to get it, then you've got to worry about getting cancer. You need to be worried about getting cancer because you're not getting enough sun. Sun does much more good in terms of cancer than it does harm. And if, go ahead. You, uh, I've heard that you absorb less, less and the older you get, you don't absorb it as much. That's true. It is a little bit harder. Okay. Um, but your body just still does at every okay. age. Now, if you're wearing moisturizers, because if you're wearing anything with sunscreen, it blocks uh, an SPF of 8 will block about 90% of your vitamin D production. So I'm not advocating that people get out and get sunburned. That's not the goal. Nobody should burn their skin. But more sun equals less cancer. And you think about it, at the turn of the 19th century, over 90% of the population worked outdoors. We were an agricultural society. We were in the sun. Skin cancer did not exist at the turn of the century. It was almost unheard of. Now less than 10% of our population works outdoors, and skin cancer is exploding. So it's not an external problem. It's an internal issue. Skin cancer is an internal problem, not an external problem. What's the recommended daily vitamin D3? Good question. You want your D levels to be between 60 and 80. Okay. No. Nope. On your blood test. So when you get your blood test, your vitamin D levels should be between 60 and 80. If your vitamin D level is 70, and I can show you the research, I don't have it in this slide. If you have a vitamin D level, a blood level of 70, you cut your risk of all cancers by about 75%. And it's so easy. It's, it's cheap. It's easy. Everybody could do it. You either get 20 minutes of sunshine every day or you take supplemental vitamin D. So easy. You could, we, we could cut all cancer across the country by 75%. But you, so like, say I have 5,000 IUs or whatever, or however, whatever. That's a good maintenance dose if you're already at your targeted 70 nanograms per deciliter level of your blood test. You gotta have a blood test. Now, if your levels are, because the medical normal, if anybody's have, ever had their vitamin D tested, is between 30 and 100. So as long as you're at 31, you're okay. Well, that's just enough to keep you from getting rickets. <laughs> so the, 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 the way these standards and these norms are set up is, as long as you don't have a severe deficiency disease where your bones get soft and you get bow-legged, as long as you don't develop rickets, then you're okay as long as you're right above that threshold. And that's, that's garbage. 
60 between 60 and 80 but safely like I give my daughter two or three thousand vitamin uh, units of vitamin D not in the summer because she's out all the time outside uh, but I take about 5,000 every day in the winter months I'll take about 10,000 a day so go ahead there. Maybe mention how many glasses of milk you'd actually have to drink. Yep, that's another one we're told to get our milk for our vitamin D, right? To get the minimal dosage, to get the, just the minimal recommendation, you need about 111 glasses of milk to get your body's normal recommended dose of vitamin D. I don't know anybody drinking that much milk or would want to drink that much milk. So vitamin D3 strengthens your immune system, enhances your digestive tract. The one we have carries about a billion probiotics from a whole food source. And ideally, everybody would get 10 to 15 minutes of sun exposure on your face, arms, and hands every single day. Um, but we work indoors, we live indoors, we play indoors. We spend most of our time, we even drive essentially indoors, um, hang our arm out the window. But um, for the most part, we live and work indoors. And another benefit is over a three-year period, this was a huge study of epidemiology, over a three-year period, they just took 2,000 units of vitamin D and there were virtually zero colds and flus. We can eliminate colds and flus by just taking 2,000 units of vitamin D a day. So simple. Why is that not all over headline news? Well, you can't patent vitamin D. You cannot patent a naturally occurring substance. There's not a lot of money in these supplements. That's why they tend to get poo-pooed on and tell you, oh, you're wasting your money. Be careful, you can get hurt. Um, less than 11 deaths over 20 years have been associated with supplements. And most of those are suspect. 11. And there's about 3 million deaths attributed to pharmaceutical death, uh, drugs. So what's really the danger? So you want to make sure you're activating your cancer-killing system. So to call your cancer-killing system into action, you want to increase your body's release of what's called interleukin-2. Anyone so ever heard of interleukin-2? It's your body's natural cancer killer. Uh, the pharmaceutical companies are breaking their necks trying to, to synthetically produce interleukin-2. They've been unsuccessful up to this point, but you want to increase interleukin-2 because it promotes the growth of T-cells. When someone has AIDS, their T-cell count goes down so their body can't fight off infection. So it activates the natural killer cells and those natural killer cells actually not only help with cancer, but they kill viruses. And it activates lymphokine activating cells, or LAK cells, which destroy tumor cells. And they actually destroy the tumor cells, and they leave the healthy cells completely alone. So it's selectively toxic to just the cancer and leaves the healthy tissue unscathed. So how do we increase our interleukin-2? In a 2010 study, they showed a direct response from an adjustment to cancer and in your infection fighting system. It showed that the chiropractic adjustments temporarily in increased your interleukin-2 regulated biological responses just after a single adjustment. So that seems weird, but when you get your back popped or your neck popped or whatever, when you get your adjustment, <laughs> or whoever the probably supposed to say it, it, it increases your body's cancer fighting mechanism and it boosts your interleukin-2. And one could assume from this work that if we did spinal correction, which is where we actually try to fix this underlying spinal problem, you would get more of a long-term sustained response and promote the immune, immune strength over a long term. So this immune system, or this, uh, this, this research is actually emerging. It's just slow to come on because we don't have big drug companies funding the research. It's, you know, it's having to fundraise to get these research studies done. Uh, Dr. Brennan, she's a PhD found that when the chiropractic adjustments were done to the middle back, so between the shoulder blades, they showed an immediate response of the white blood cells that were collected 15 minutes after the care, and it was significantly higher than before the adjustment or 30 and 45 minutes later. So it causes a, a, a respiratory burst of the white blood cell activity. So just getting your back adjusted increases white blood cell activity. It is temporarily, but you know everything in the body is, is temporary. So it's a good tool to use in addition. University of Rochester School of Medicine, Dr. Felton, um, found that nerve fibers go to every organ of the immune system. So you have nerve fibers to your spleen, you have nerve fibers to your blood system, and if you remove or you damage those nerves, he actually took the nerves away, and when you take the nerves away, then the immune function shuts down. So the immune system is actually driven by the nervous system. Your immune system doesn't run on its own, it's controlled and coordinated by the brain and the nervous system. 
Anything that interferes with those systems, the immune system or the nervous system, um, decreases your interleukin-2 and throws the body out of balance. Breach immunity makes you more um, uh, prone to infection or to illness. That's cute. <laughs> so some warning signs and symptoms that your body's not working properly, because that's really all symptoms are, just a sign that your body is out of balance, right? Um, if, you, if you hurt your leg, the leg is not the problem or the pain is not the problem, it's just your body's way of telling you that there's a problem. If you have a headache, there's the, the pain is not the issue, it's the body's way of telling you that there's a problem. So our symptoms are not really the problem, and they're just the warning sign. So headaches, insomnia, brain fog, high blood pressure, infertility, depression, fatigue, diabetes, sci sciatica. Diabetes, by the way, would refer to type 2 diabetes. Neck pain, menstrual problems, weight loss, low back pain, dizziness, acid reflux, numbness, tingling, allergies, and asthma. That pretty well names about 98% of American population. So those we're all experiencing those warning signs. The problem is they're so common, we just think they're normal. Because, you know, if everybody in Nashville had tuberculosis, would we think that that's normal just because it's very common? Of course not. So common does not equal normal. So in our office, we do corrective spinal care. So we do pre and post x-rays to see if we're actually fixing the problem or if we're just managing the symptoms. And then um, the curve in the neck, too, is very important. Because with a curve in the neck, there's no tension on the spinal cord. We all should have a nice forward C-shaped curve to the neck. If you hold your, your hand like the letter C, the meaty part of your hand would represent your spinal cord. So when you've got a curve, it's nice and loose with no tension. When you lose the curve in the neck, it starts to stretch and pull the spinal cord tight. And what we know, when you put tension on the spinal cord, you affect the immune system. It's just because the nervous system controls the immune system. By the way, too, when you have this nice curve in your neck, that's what happens to the spinal cord. It's nice and big and round. Plenty of nice big wide hose for all the messages from the brain to get down to the body. When you lose the curve in your neck, that's what it does to the spinal cord. So which one gets more neck pain? Right. Which one gets the flu first? Right. Which one gets cancer first? Right. right, so you're healthy proportionate to how healthy your nervous system is. If your nervous system is as healthy as a 110 year old, you're about as healthy as a 110 year old which would be nice to be that old. Um, so if anybody here is a guest, we offer the initial exam consultation x-rays at uh, just $20. It's normally about $240 worth of tests. So if you want to get checked out, if you have friends and family, um, you know, just help spread this message. If you have other friends and family that live out of town and you want to get them hooked up with another Maximize Living office, just let us know or you can go to MaximizeLiving.com and you can uh, put in their zip code and, and locate someone near them. That's our goal, is to help get this message out there. Most of what you heard tonight, you're not really going to hear in mainstream media. So we've got to get people plugged into resources. We need more education, not more medication. That's the key. Yes, right. I heard you mention uh, sugar earlier, but I didn't hear you mention anything about the artificial sweeteners. Right. You know, we probably spent 30 minutes just on those. Um, yeah, artificial sweeteners are either neurotoxic or they're, they're chemically toxic. So like your, anyone know what Splenda is? Chlorine. Chlorine, right. It's, it's a chlorinated sugar molecule. So they take the sugar and they kick off an OH group and they add a chlorine molecule. It was first marketed as a, you want to know? Rat poison. It's a pesticide. It was first hit the market. They designed it to be a pesticide, but it tasted so sweet, all us dumb adults and humans started eating it, so they gave it to us as a sweetener. Uh, so it's, it's chemically toxic. It's chlorine, essentially. And then your other, like your Equal and your Splenda, all your other ones are excitotoxins. So they excite your taste buds. That's why they taste so good. Your taste buds are an extension of the nervous system. So those excitotoxins drive your nervous system bonkers. So you don't want to avoid those. And so aspartame, what are, aspartame? Yeah, aspartame, aspartame, sweet and low, Equal, they all sort of fit in that category. And do they promote cancer? I would say anything that deteriorates and really we have to really think of it as um, sort of step back, I guess, from it and look at the body as a whole. Anything that makes the body healthier prevents cancer. Anything that makes the body sicker promotes cancer. And almost look at it not so much from an individual parts and pieces standpoint, but how does it affect the body as a whole? And but stevia yeah. is a... Yeah, I was going to say, what are the two best alternatives for sweeteners? Stevia and... Xylitol. Xylitol. Agave is a good... Xylitol. It's high glycemic. It does have a lot of sugar, but it's better than 
you know, scooped out sugar or Mrs. Butterworth. <laughs> a lot better than those two. What was the X one? Xylitol. It's in that. Uh, so xylitol you use like you use sugar. So a scoop of like a cup of sugar would use a cup of xylitol. And stevia, you use that the way you would use an artificial sweetener. A little bit goes a long way. And the liquid, I think, is better than the batter. Yes. I love the liquid stevia. Every night I eat chocolate and ice cream. You've probably heard me say this before, but every night I eat chocolate and ice cream for the most part. But the chocolate, well, what's the trick with the chocolate? Dark, Dark chocolate, at least 70%. And then what's the trick with the ice cream? What's that? No cream. No cream, right? Oh, no. It's a scoop of protein powder. Oh. It's some almond yes. milk or coconut milk with some berries, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries. I use a little bit of that French vanilla liquid stevia, which makes it almost too sweet. You got to be careful with it. And then some cinnamon to help control blood sugar. It's a good antioxidant. And you, you make it really thick so it scoops out like ice cream. So every night I get to eat ice cream and chocolate. But instead of making me sick and full of cancer, it actually makes you healthy. How much milk did you say? <laughs> yeah, let's have that recipe. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a recipe guy. I just sort of dump and I'm not my wife drives my wife crazy. Probably about a half of a cup. Like two percent, you mean? Milk? Mm -hmm. no, he's not Get onto it. Oh no milk. <laughs> yeah, almond milk, oh, coconut almond milk. milk. Oh. Yeah, almond milk or coconut like milk. milk. Or you could use raw milk. That would be an alternative. Raw milk's fairly hard to get a hold of because it's illegal to sell you raw milk. Has anyone ever bought raw milk before? I used what's to it, what's it. it on the label? It says pet food. Right. It's illegal for human consumption. Right. So they, they can't sell you milk, but they can legally sell you cigarettes. So those are fine, but milk you've got to be careful of. <laughs> Where's the conflict of interest there? Um, so yeah, you just add enough for whatever consistency you want it to be. Uh, if you want it real thick, you use less. If you want it runnier, you use more. Awesome, guys. Any other questions? We'll stick around for a minute and if you do have anything in